<laughs> Welcome to Staying Up with Cammie and Taryn. I'm Cammie. And I'm Taryn. And we get to have a sleepover every night. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a funny hour. Uh, we get to have a sleepover every night, but every week we invite you to join us. So thanks for staying up. Hello, darling. Hello, honey. The queen of my queen, the king of my king. Thanks. Thank you. The someone, Santa of my Christmas. Someone that's not like internet savvy at all. My friend Callie yeah. asked, called me king. I love that. Just like, what are you up to today, king? Like, and I just, it stuck with me so much. I love it. It's good. It was just sweet. It was sweet. Hi. It's like the the cooler version of daddy. <laughs> king is just like cuz you can be a respectful king. You can be a, you can be a short king. You can be a short king. King is strong. Yeah. It it's weird because it's a, it's a word that typically is reserved for not the vibe. Males. <laughs> yeah. And now we've kind of reclaimed it. Yeah. The gays and the girlies. Yeah, we're like, no, 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 no. You're not a king. I'm a king. <laughs> I love that. Well, I love it too. Thanks for staying up with us, y'all. It's been a doozy. It's been a fucking doozy. <laughs> we have had the week of all weeks. If you follow us on socials, you probably already know. But we had a crazy day Monday. It and was- should we just drop the big bomb right now? Or should we set the whole scene? We're going to set the scene. But before oh. we set the scene, I would like to give a special shout out to a few folks that left us five-star reviews. Oh, that's nice. Hey, Your guys. Your names are Kate High, Lawrence Nine, Dakafadandi, Watt023, and Lawrence88888. <laughs> to you, I'd like to say thank you. Thank I'd you. I'd also like to say we went in really hard um, on becca 4199 when she gave us a four-star review yeah i'm so sorry becca but i have since gotten a dm from becca 4199 (gasps) herself shut up that said her finger did indeed slip (gasps) she did not mean to give us a four-star review Um, oh my god becca delete it take it back i don't know that you can (gasps) but the dm it was was a finger slip i don't know do we believe it I believe that. Mm. And then her girlfriend also left a review oh. and she said she made her girlfriend or I don't know if made her, but like her girlfriend had to download that, download the podcast app to leave a review, a five-star review on to her behalf. Try to like bounce it out. So listen, Becca, we forgive you. We love you, Becca. Becca 4199. <laughs> we forgive you. We love you. Uh, final reminder that we are donating a dollar for every review. Today's that we last get. day actually. Yeah. So by the time you're hearing this podcast, we shouldn't tell them that because we want them to review. We should lie. Yeah, yeah. Do we do it through December? No. Oh. <laughs> Urgency, baby. November. Right. Don't. Sorry, we're sorry. not doing you're it through right. December. You're right. You're right. You're right. Anyway, I'm excited. Um, we're not fishing for for reviews, but we are yes, letting we, you know that it really exactly what we're doing. that it really matters. And uh, you know, we're trying to make a living out of this. So <laughs> are we? I don't know. I feel lost. Honey, in my we haven't mind. made a dime. We haven't made a single fucking dime. But you know, we're having fun. We haven't made a single fucking dime. We just decorated for Christmas tonight and our house looks so cozy and cheery. I almost want to like go film this in the living room so you guys can see it. So it's kind of like, did we go overboard? No. What? I think it's my view right now. There's lights pouring out of every corner the Christmas of the tree. home. All you can see is a... What? No, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing the light behind you. That's that not even a Christmas always light. there. Yeah, maybe I'm just Karen, seeing everything okay. in a new way. Bah humbug. <laughs> Jesus. No, it, it was sweet. I love going to pick out a Christmas tree with you. It feels very... Um, it feels very like if I was in a movie and I was like knocked unconscious... Huh? Like, just bear with me. Okay. Kay. Say you're in a movie, Kay. right? A minute. And like your life is going a certain way. Mm-hmm. And then like, ooh, bing, boom, bop, you get hit with a car or something, Whoa. right? But you're not dead. Okay. But your life flashes before your eyes with like your dream life. Mm-hmm. A scene that I imagine seeing would be you and I Christmas shopping Babe. or Christmas tree shopping. That's cute. And being like, this one, Douglas fir. Oh, Bassam, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> But, but you know what I mean? And, the, and, and then I would come to, mm-hmm. and it would have been like four years. And, and I've been like, I got to find that girl. Wow. Yeah. 
I love that. Yeah, so anyway, that's how it feels when we go Christmas tree shopping. I love Christmas tree shopping with you. We did something kind of really special this year. So Taryn's friend texted her, and he's with his fiance's family right now, and they went Christmas tree shopping. And he was like, we just did the most Taryn Arnold thing ever. So every year, his fiance's family goes Christmas tree shopping, but they don't look for the most luscious, beautiful, perfect Christmas tree. They look for the one... A little wonky, a little thinner than others, a little straggly, a little wonky, and they give it a good home. And instantly we're like, that is so cute. We have to steal that tradition. So we did. Which was honestly at first a little against my nature. The Christmas tree is the one thing that I'm like, it has to be perfect. Yeah. The lights have to be perfect. The ornaments have to be perfectly placed and spaced out and all the stuff. But it felt so special. It almost felt like getting rescue dog first. Like, adopt, don't chop. <laughs> we rescued a Christmas tree. <laughs> we rescued a Christmas No one would have wanted this Christmas tree, but we wanted it. Like, we're overselling it. You know it's what? not this, like... I bet I can turn my computer if you guys are watching the episode. There you oh. go. There oh, she no. is. It looks stunning. She's so video. cute. She she looks like she's got a little she's something. A little she's a, is it a she or a he to you? She. I actually felt Everything like it good was... and beautiful is a she. <laughs> That's nice. Except for every dog's a he, so never mind. Yeah. Also, all bugs are he's. Oh, all bu- of course. Not even a ladybug is a she to me. No. All bugs are he's. That's like a new trend. You know how the TikTok trend of like things that are just for the girls and people be like <laughs> saying ew. <laughs> Taking baths. It's so <laughs> funny. We should do like what? what are things that are just... Just always boys <laughs> because they're <laughs> gross. I used to have like a weird little. Have I told you about my crayons? No. Growing oh, up, yes. Um, for the listeners to get to know me a little better, um, I used to like assign personalities to the four crayon box that you would get when you would eat out as a kid. I love that. So like the blue, red, yellow, and green. Mm-hmm. And the blue and the red, the blue and the green were boys, and the red and the yellow were girls. They're basically just M&M's, babe. Oh, no, basically the green M&M's. M&M's a girl. Right? Yeah. She's like the sexy. No, no, no. Yeah. No, the yellow and M&M is a sexy girl. Oh. No. That is disgusting that we're having this conversation. Um, that no, yellow not. piece of chocolate is a sexy girl. Okay, okay, you keep telling I'm looking them up. But I would make the blue crayon was the coolest crayon the blue of course yeah of course course. it It was like that's how what what i saw myself as Mm -hmm. which doesn't really make sense but it doesn't matter i get that the blue was like so cool it was kind of blue reminded me of hey arnold yeah okay so blue was arnold okay green was gerald yeah in my head oh he's my favorite then it breaks when it goes to the girl crayons but the red and the yellow the yellow was like kind of like phoebe in that show yeah, um, I get that. I get that. Where like Gerald and her were always vibing. Yeah. And then there was a little red crayon mm-hmm. who was sassy. Mm-hmm. You know what? That's what's her head. Helga. Helga. Helga G. Patel. Did I just... You were just I... equating them <laughs> to Hey Arnold, honey. <laughs> Whatever. But because it was cute. For reference, the M&M's the yellow one is the tall, like dopey guy. The main guy. Who's the hottie girl? And the the green. like I said. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So the red, the red and the yellow are the main guys. And then there's a blue guy who's, like, very similar to the yellow, but, like, a little dopier eyes. Okay. The orange looks scared. I don't know who he is. The brown one's, like, this, like, sassy woman. Like, mm. kind of kind of reminds me of your light Mike was out. Mm. Hate that girl. And yeah, then the green is, like, her. the hottie. Love that. Just so you know. For well, your reference. thank you so much for listening. Thank you, guys. <laughs> to Eminem history <laughs> and the crayons and how they fuck. Oh my god. god! I used to make them. I used to like think no. that they were. Yeah, it's fine. Your crayons or your M and M's? My crayons. We're fucking. Yeah, dude. The green and the yellow were sneaking around the corner. How? Like, and then they would. What go- were the visuals? Was it like a sixty-nine situation? <laughs> I don't remember. Was it? Tip but it was tip? something. I think I might have it colored like sword- on top of each other. Hot, Mix which is up. honestly beautiful if you think about it. A melding of the of the skin. Yeah, <laughs> just mix all the bodily fluids. Y'all, thanks for listening. Um, we're very happy that our last episode, Ten Things I Hate About You, really 
And it helped. Oh, wait. Before we talk about that, oh, I have to retract a statement I made oh, last episode that I did not realize that I said. So I was talking about my bachelorette trip, and we went to the guy's winery, and I said he was from New Zealand. And I said, just like my best friends, Amy and Simone's families are mm. from New Zealand. I don't know why I said New Zealand. I actually, for the longest time, struggled saying the words New Zealand. How would you say it? I, it's not... I would just like New Zealand. <laughs> no, I said New Zealand. <laughs> My so accent's so crazy. Up. I used to always say New Zealand. <laughs> I'm like, I really want to go to New Zealand. <laughs> um, I did not mean to. We're say not going to come back from I'm this. Yeah, I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm I meant crying. to say South Africa. I know where my friends' families are from. I didn't realize I said it. They were so mad at me. I know. We got but you know what? up the wazoo. All, you, maybe it was a test because I wanted to make sure my friends really listen. And guess what? They do. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, vibes. Amy, Sam, I love you guys. Did I even say it right this time? Now I want to play it back. It doesn't matter. They're it's from not. somewhere else. <laughs> it's not America. <laughs> and it's not New Zealand. And um, they're both actually Australian, so shut up. But what was really interesting about this last episode is that y'all basically all said... Samesies. <laughs> samesies, but also like, I'm the Taryn in the cleaning situation. I'm the Cami in the cleaning situation. It was really cute. My favorite was message me. I got was somebody saying, I'm the Taryn in the relationship and hearing you explain it made it click. I think sometimes hearing yeah. an argument, not from your significant other, some like an outside source being like, this is how I feel. And you're, you kind of take your emotion out of it because they had nothing to do with our relationship. Yeah. They were able to understand their partner by hearing me and vice versa for the people who are like me and couldn't understand Taryn. So I'm like, maybe I just need to listen to the podcast and pretend it's not us. That's why in debate school, you often have to debate the other side. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I love to. We, we should try this. that one time. Something that we disagree about and we should try to debate. Oh, oh my God. God. I wish there was something Taryn loves to just right find now. new ways for us to argue. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, you know, it'd be fun if we just like fought to the death. <laughs> like, would it, babe? Can we just live in peace for five fucking seconds? You don't. You are causing something. Like, you know, it'd be so kooky and silly. Baby. Tell me 10 things you hate about me and then I'm going to yell at you. <laughs> oh, wait, we already did that. <laughs> what do you mean I'm going to yell at you? I'm kidding. Aww. Oh, oh my God. Oh, no. my God. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm not hugging you this episode. Okay. Wow. This should be called, quote, I'm not hugging you this episode. <laughs> <laughs> People can figure out what the fuck brought us there. Oh, Babe, tell them what's going on in our life oh, and why God, why guys. we're in this mindset. Okay, you know what? clearly shattered. I know you don't agree with this, but I'm starting with the spoiler. I'm just sharing this. Don't. Yes, I think Ugh. I think the ball drop is more impactful to be like, this happened, and then we give the story about it. I don't agree, but I love you. Too anyway. bad I'm doing it. Guys, our fucking wedding venue canceled. Our wedding venue canceled. Which doesn't sound like it's that wild we until three you realize. Out. Okay. She <laughs> really scooped it again. This is my story, bitch. Kidding. Go ahead. No, no, please. There's nothing else. It is shocking. It's the first thing we figured out besides our wedding planner. And going into wedding planner planning, Taryn was really stressed out, like instantly. <laughs> what is this? No, that's true, babe. I, I mean, I was stressed, but... No, instantly going into wedding planning, I think you got super overwhelmed at first and you're like, yeah. I will feel better once we pick our wedding planners and our venue. Those were the two things and our date. Well, because you guys, it, that's like being like, I'm going to throw a party for 200 people. You want to know where it's going to yeah. be. No, the you're, second honey, you're like judging, you're so delivered. right. You're so right. I totally agree Thank with you. you. Would you say what you just said louder? You are so <laughs> right. Thank you. Um, no, I totally agree with you. And email. those... Those are the first three things that you have to do when planning a wedding. And we did it so early on. Like we got engaged last November and I think we picked our venue by the end of the year or January, like immediately. Yeah. We, picked our venue. It's we been visited almost a year. it like three times. So early on. So here is how our Monday went. We had our engagement photos and they were kind of somewhere in between San Diego yeah, San Diego and Palm Springs. Like they're out in the desert, middle of nowhere. 
And I wanted to surprise Taryn and rent this, like, cute old vintage car for the photos and surprise her. I did not know that Taryn was planning on working in the car on the way there. And her car has Wi-Fi. And this vintage car had nothing. <laughs> when we say nothing, we mean... Not- no radio. Stop. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Doing that. I thought you didn't know the words. I'm trying to help you. I'm just going to turn my mic off. No, no, no. Go, baby. Go. Like, you know, a vintage car. It's like, you don't know what it's going to have. And then this one didn't even have a radio. It didn't have a radio? (laughs) It didn't. Like, it had the Bluetooth thing, and then the guy couldn't get it to work, and then the radio, the antenna was fucked. Yeah. And so we were on a, kid you not. Four hour. Three. Well, we left at 11, so we left the house at eleven thirty. We had to they go the opposite to the way. No, I think this matters. We had to go opposite <laughs> way. How upset we are by the details. Well, of here's our the last thing: I hate being late. Oh, I just hate it, and I hate flaking on people. Our photographer, Asha, bless your soul, you are amazing. We had to cancel on her twice, basically. I mean, we the first time we kind of both decided. Second time we canceled, and yeah. We were supposed to meet at three. She's like, as long as we're there by three for the lighting. So I'm like panicked in the morning. We're running around. We're getting ready. We're figuring out our outfits. We have nothing prepared because the day before Taryn accidentally got wasted. (laughs) Oh my God. Our days lasted much longer than I realized. You guys, I got wasted on Sunday. Accidentally. Accidentally. It was was football Sunday. so funny. We went on a really long walk. We went to our neighborhood bar. And I was just absolutely vibing. Yeah, we were just vibing out. We had multiple drinks. It was lovely. Then things, it was like that moment where you're like, do I keep going or do I not? She kept going. And I did keep going because there was a couple next to me that had a complicated relationship. And I could hear them talking about it. And I wanted the tea so bad that I just wanted to stay at the bar and keep drinking. Yeah. And that I did to the point where I threw up, you guys. That day, that day, not next day, not later that night. I went home and threw up. I've probably sad. thrown up from drinking four times in my life. It was really sad. You were so sad about it too. I was so sad. I hate throwing up. It was bad. And I hate throwing up from drinking. Mm-hmm. And my whole plans for Sunday were to get everything prepared for the yeah. shoot so that Monday morning we weren't rushed. Monday we wake up. We are so unprepared. It's horrible. We're I have around. to make we're a both- presentation to my whole company. Taryn has like the most important meeting of her work. And not just that, but you were like prepping for it. it was, it was crazy. So Taryn couldn't even like start getting ready until like 30 minutes before I have to leave. I'm doing her makeup. She didn't have time to shower. So I'm like trying to curl her hair to get her curls back in. It, we're stressed. We get out of here at 1130. I, I would also like to add that the presentation that I gave to my company was not like a quick, I'm just going to do a little chit chat. No, it was important. It summarized <laughs> the work that I had done for the last five months. It was so important. And I was basically saying like, hey, here's what our new brand looks like. So it wasn't a small thing. I was extremely focused. I was pretty stressed about it. Um, And then I had my Sunday and then this day happened and I'm like, okay, Cami rented a car and we're going to go get our pictures taken. And I hate getting my picture taken. So that- As do I. In a- I roll my eyes when Cami says that because- Yeah, that's not fair. It's not fair. say how I I feel. I'm not saying how you feel. I didn't even say how you felt. Yeah, but you shouldn't roll your eyes at me being like, I hate my picture taken. I, I was just commentating what I did. I'm not saying it's right. And I know it's wrong. <laughs> Cammy, regardless of not liking to get her picture taken, is great in front of a camera. I freeze up. I look like a fucking goober. Not true. True. Not true. <laughs> and it's just not fun for me. I understand that it's not fun for you either. Yeah. But anyway, so I just really didn't look forward to it. We went into this day stressed and I was on a mission to make it fun. I was like the whole process of wedding planning. I've been on this mission of like, everything should be fun. Nothing should be a stress. We are literally planning a party. This should not like, why do people freak out about this? All of it should be good and fun. And if it's not, don't do it. Don't do the things that you don't like with our package of our photographer. She gives free engagement sh- shoot. And we're like, of course we should do this. You get to know the photographer, get a feel for her, get more comfortable in front of her. So I'm like, we have to do this. We are doing this. Yeah. We're going to get, we want photographs. We're going to do it. So I ride the car. We're all excited. We pick up the car. 
this guy is so slow. He's like explaining mm-hmm. the most minute things about the car that I will never need to know. Shows me how to move the seat 80 times, tries to get the radio thing working a thousand times. And I, I, I'm like, we're late. It's okay. We don't need the Bluetooth. I'm on a call on my AirPods, like walking Katarin's around, walking the, around the neighborhood. The neighborhood. <laughs> and I'm like, it's okay, sir. Like, I appreciate it. But it, the Bluetooth is fine. We, like, we'll live. We don't need it. And like for 30 minutes, he's still trying to fix Bluetooth. So we're late. As we leave here, we are going to get to the location 30 minutes late, which is a problem because the sun is setting and we have like 20 minutes to get this shot. And the shoot is an hour long. Yeah. So us being 30 minutes late. Yeah. Now we have, yeah, we have 30 minutes to get the shot. It's yeah. like, okay, shit. So, which not even, I, I think it was like, we'll have a couple minutes of light and then we'll get the rest without light. So we get in the car, we're driving, we are trying to give good vibes. We're like chatting and we're having a nice time. And, and again, there's no music. And I know that sounds ridiculous that I'm focusing on this, but it's not even like no radio music. Well, the car's loud as hell. Because there's no there's holes in the sunroof. <laughs> there's holes in the sunroof. It's a convertible, but there's holes in it. So it's like <laughs> for three hours and then no music. So you're just sat there listening to your thoughts, which nobody is enjoying that. And then anytime that we're not listening to our thoughts, we're like, how do you feel driving the car? It's good. The brakes don't respond for super well. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I then did not say the brake. So I was just like, it's different. You did. You I said, said the that- steering wheel is loose. <laughs> okay. Same vibes. <laughs> then I interrupt. No, our, we're like, we're good bit in. I, honestly, I was vibing at that point. I don't want to act like I was. So was I, but I was also I was trying to work from my phone. Yeah. Taryn's on her phone working, trying to get stuff done. Doesn't have service is stressed out. People are like asking her stuff. I'm like, the serum is really wide. So I'm like, dee, 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 dee. it was just, and I check my personal email, which I don't do often during the day because my whole, maybe, maybe a mistake, my company's <laughs> whole thing. One thing that we do is like basically email. It's its own email client that is outside of my Gmail. So I never really check my personal email during the day. I pop it open and I see an email titled Kempa Villa, Taryn and Cami. And she's like, Oh my gosh, our venue. Great. <laughs> no, because I, I saw the preview oh, you, text you of knew. the email oh. that said, we are reaching out to and I was like, that's weird. The only, e- the only emails we've been getting from Kempa for the last eight months have been receipts Yeah, for our monthly charge. Mm-hmm. This is what the email says from Kempa. As we're driving to our shoot. No, no, wait. Tara doesn't read it to me right away. She just goes, oh my God, Kempa canceled. Oh. And I went, what? She went, they canceled. And I was like, are you joking? And she was like, no, they canceled. And we just started laughing. We were like, oh my God. And I start reading and I said, hello, Taryn and Cami. We are reaching out to regrettably inform you that we will not be able to host your wedding and any additional events at Kempa Villa. Riverside County has informed us that we are no longer allowed to host events slash gatherings over 24 people going forward. Mind you, our wedding is 200 people. <laughs> Kempa lower. Villa understands that your agreement are that your agreements are for both lodging and your events. If you would like to still lodge with us, we'd be happy to have you in your group. Stay with us. Once we hear from you regarding how you'd like to proceed, we'll be able to put together a new lodging only agreement or cancellation confirmation and process all refunds accordingly. We understand that this is not news that you or we ever wanted to hear. And I am happy to get on the phone with you to discuss further if you would like. My phone number is blah, 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 blah. Honestly, they need to go suck a big old dick if they think we're going to like... Stay at their lodging and pay to sleep there. And when they canceled the venue, we're like, oh, no worries. We'll find a new place for our 200 person wedding, but we do want to sleep at your place. What? Like, Yo, I this giving is... us the option, but what? There are so many shocking things about this, but the two that I will call out is that this is a wedding that was supposed to be in three months, which is super, super soon given special given any big event and like just trying to plan ahead, but especially like the post COVID wedding boom. Yeah. This is so close to the date that it's <laughs> shocking that they said this. And two, their crisis comms are hysterical. So bad. Hysterical. So that bad. some dude they sat there team. and typed this message and was like, all right, I'm sending it to the 10 weddings we have coming up. 
We regrettably have to tell you we will no longer host your wedding. It's like it's insane. There are about five days in my life that I plan. No, there's probably one day in my life that I plan to this, this extent. Much? Yeah, and it's this. Yeah, there's no other day you plan like this. So to be like, sorry, you and your 200 guests Did are they even literally say the word, I'm sorry. Is that in there? No, they said I don't think legally. I think that there, you can't apologize because then it's like taking ownership. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So they kind of just said, "I'm like, just like if I was on their PR team, I would go. We are devastated by this as much as you. Like this, we're blindsided. Blah blah blah. But we have found out they were not very blindsided. It seems like the county has been trying to stop this. That they've been kind of like infringing on some of their laws." And that they just kept booking weddings, hoping it would work out. They were getting, they were getting, um, increasingly more in trouble because we saw weddings where people mm-hmm. had, had parties late into the night there, which yeah, like was after fine. Parties there. And then we heard that everyone had to be off the lot at 10 and we were like, Oh, that's so weird. We want to have our after party. And they were mm-hmm. like, Oh no, like you have to be off the lot by 10 now. And then we saw more weddings coming out that were happening there where people were inside at 10. Yeah. Which they wouldn't even let us do. So it's just, look, no decision like that for a business is fun. No. And delivering that news is not fun for anybody ever. That's like delivering the news of layoffs. Totally. Everyone will find a way to pick apart what to do. Yeah. And how they should have done it. There are wrong ways, but there are wrong ways. And I think this was the wrong way, (laughs) but I feel oddly calm about it. Yeah. I just feel like this happened for a reason. We're going to find a better place. It wasn't perfect. There were like, we hated that. We couldn't have the after party there. We kept saying, ideally we would just have a wedding that goes later. We don't want to have a separate location after party, but we decided we would. We were going to have it at the hotel where our room block is, and then we could do that till 2 a.m. I feel like we're going to find a spot, and we already have a lead on, that we can get everything we want. I, I yeah. truly, truly feel like this all happened for the best. I'm not going to say I feel relief. That would be a stretch. Yeah, but I, just, I don't feel relief. I feel okay. I feel like it's going to work out. It's going to be okay. It's either going to cancel out and it's going to be like neither here nor there and it's fine or it's going to be better wherever we go. I just feel good. Like I, I don't know. I just, I will not allow myself to stress out a party. We are having a party. This is not a family illness. This is not a layoff. There's so many bad things that you and I throughout our marriage are going to have to deal with together Yeah, that warrant us crying, laying in bed, throwing a tantrum, feeling sick over, but this is not one of them. It kind of reminds me of when like, you know, a teenager is like going through something and it seems like the biggest thing of their entire life. And you being 30, 32, whatever Mm -hmm. can look back and be like, that really sucks. I understand to you that that is like so overwhelming, Yeah, but it's also not. Yeah. That's how I feel the future me is probably looking at this situation and being like, remember that stupid villa that you guys thought (laughs) you were going to get married at that was one tenth of what you actually wanted. Yeah. And that you freaked out about it for a week. And silly, silly girl. So it's all perspective in it. I'm super stressed out about it. (laughs) Fair. The way I described it to a friend, one of my best friends texted me today and was like, mental health check about the venue. How are you feeling? And I was like, I'm not stressed about the venue. I'm stressed to have another thing to stress about Mm -hmm. where I love a checklist. I love a to-do list. I love knocking things off. You checked it off. And And this was checked off and it was like the biggest 40% of the battle. Yeah. And so I'm so annoyed that that has come back into the picture. Totally fair. But I, if I'm, if I'm being honest with you, I would love that. Kempa felt something felt off. 
Yeah, I love that you're saying that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know if it felt off to me, but you saying that, I'm like, yeah, it did. Bad vibes. That fucking place. No, no, no. <laughs> not even bad vibes, but I just felt like it never was, it never, it never like, felt it like it was like, ours. Like we, we it was going to happen. It was like Lego pieces that like kind of click together, but you're like, this is not going to hold up. Mm-hmm. I felt like but in no my one else head, would know that. If, if there's anyone who believes it, and I'm not saying I believe in this, I don't know what I believe in, but if there's anyone who thinks that time is not linear and it's like we experience all of the things all at once and it's like you've already experienced the things you've experienced, whatever, you know, that whole concept. Yeah. If, if there's evidence for that, this might be one of them. I didn't feel off about it. In the moment, I felt good, but it's almost like I already knew this happened. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, there was, there was a future me who was in That's current... you being omniscient, baby. That's a God quality right there. I stopped relating my spirituality <laughs> to always being God related. Just saying. I'm agnostic. No, I but I am just saying that. that's, that's, but I just feel like potentially like I've always felt a little bit psychic. Maybe it's a Pisces in me. Everyone <laughs> feels a little psychic. Not everyone feels psychic. Not to the level that I have and I do and that other Pisces I knew you do. felt that. Shut up. <laughs> but I just think it felt good when we were there. I loved it. It, but you know what? I feel like maybe anyone could say that about planning their wedding. It feels so surreal. It yeah. almost doesn't feel real. So maybe it was that energy. I don't know, but I do agree. It didn't feel like, it didn't feel like we were ever going to get to the point where that wedding actually happened there. Yeah. I also think there's some level of like, when's the last time you felt 100% sure about anything. Like 100%. So it's 100% like, sure that you were meant to be in my life. I wrote you that yeah, letter same. right before we officially started dating. And I said, like, I've never felt certain about anything in my life. And I feel certain that I'm meant to know you. I don't know what that capacity is going to be. That's a great example. But I knew I was meant to to know you and have you in my life. So you couldn't have a hundred percent put that on how we were supposed to know each other. Totally. Where it's like, that's how I felt about Kempa. And mm-hmm. that's how I feel the more I grow up, everything becomes that mm-hmm. where I'm like, I will never be a hundred percent certain about anything. Yeah. But I will seek whatever it is that I feel pretty certain about and just like play my cards on that. You just got to be open to the experience. And this campus served its purpose in our life. It yeah. has this experience of like rolling with the punches. I think after we found out they canceled, um, we had this talk about like, we don't want to worry about this. And the most annoying thing in the world is when you're stressed out or anxious or worrying about something and someone's like, just relax. But there are certain things where you can just relax. Like obviously generalized anxiety comes on and it comes out of nowhere and there's nothing you can do about it. And big life things, like I said, illness, job, like some things do warrant actual stress and anxiety. And we decided this is just not one of those things. And I think to your point earlier of like looking back to your younger self, it's all about perception. And this is the most important thing in our lives right now, planning the wedding. Yeah. It, it can- is also the oldest we've ever been, the smartest we've ever been, yeah, the most financially stable we've ever been. Like this is us being like basically our peak selves. But I mean, like the wedding is rolling our lives right now. We talk about it. Everyone around us asks us yeah. questions about it. You and I talk about it all the time. We spend most of our free time planning little things and checking things off a list yeah. and worrying about stuff. So when something this big goes wrong with that, it does feel life altering and life ending, which is so dramatic, but it is in that moment because it is our whole life right now. Yeah. Does it annoy you at all that I have, I'm like being so calm about it? Like, are you almost wanting, cause sometimes it's nice to like sulk with your partner and be pissed off. And I feel like I've kind of shut that down and not wanted to go there. I'm not wanting you to sulk with me. That's not the feeling that I'm having. Like, I don't want us to be like, fuck, this sucks. (laughs) But it worries me that it might not become like an action situation. Like we got very 
very lucky Mm -hmm. that we had someone else that was like, I just got married in Palm Springs at a place just like Campavella. That was 10 times better. Like, that's what worries me where I'm like, if that didn't happen, Mm -hmm. would we be, we could not be sitting on our hands right now. No. And I think it's been really nice. I don't know about you, but I've had so many friends reach out and be like, this must be so, so stressful. What can I do? Like yeah. I was, Amy texted me the day after I told her, I was like, I keep thinking about this. Like, what can I do? And like ev- every one of my bridesmaids had said something. Sim today was like, I sent her the place we found and she was like, Oh, that's actually one of the places my friend sent me. Oh, so she's been talking to She recommended it and she sent me a couple other, like That's I have like a, everyone I think is holding until I'm like, please send me places. But I feel like so many of my friends already have like eight suggestions. Everyone wants to jump and help make this happen, which is so sweet. And I think we're, so we're going to Palm Springs Friday to go see a new venue that seems very similar to our old venue, maybe even better. Um, I'm going in with an open mind. I'm trying not to get my hopes up. And then I think after that, we either pull the plug and we take it and everything's fine. Or the next couple of days are going to be chaos. And we have to just like hunker down and find a place this weekend. And my new thing, Kami alluded to this earlier, but it's something I've been thinking a ton about is like her saying, okay, if we don't like this place, then we're going to have to hunker down and figure it all out. Blah, blah, blah. My brain's like, all right, bitch, buckle up. We got to stress out now. We got to figure this no. out. We got to get ahead of it. And I've just been thinking a lot about how like you can actually tell parts of your brain. Like, mm, I don't feel like we do need to worry about this yet because it literally does nothing. Um, and obviously that's not a new thought, but I have to remind myself of that constantly. Mm-hmm. One thing my therapist told me, many moons ago that sticks with me is like you can treat your anxiety like an intern that is kind of bad at their job but they're so eager to do a good job and that's like what anxiety does it's like oh my gosh i think this might hurt you i think that might hurt you i think this might be a threat that it's might be a trying to protect you and like it's doing technically a very good job at being an anxiety inflaming being but it's being a bad it's doing a bad job at being like someone that's looking out for you and actually like alerting you to things that are important. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can tell the intern like, yo, thank you. Relax. <laughs> Super. Thank you. You're working really hard and I see it, but Drink I got this much, covered. <laughs> you can come to me if something's going to stab me, if something's <laughs> going to end my life. But for now that stuff's not too spooky. Mm-hmm. So thank you. And you can take your little paperwork and go elsewhere. Um, and that's one of these things where I'm like, okay, I'm just going to take it day by day. Mm-hmm. Um, and see what, see what happens. happens. I feel yeah. good. I think it's going to be great. I think we'll so too. Out. We got this baby. So anyway, you know what? If Friday doesn't work out and the new venue doesn't work out, we just turn it into something you love. Like you love having friends over. Let's invite every one in our wedding party to come over Everyone has to bring one venue location we'll and put them on a slideshow and be like, which one do we I pick? thought you meant host the wedding at our house. And I was like, you would hate that. I would love that. A little baby wedding at our No, home. with 200 people. We can't oh, uninvite no. people. We already talked about that. Yeah. I'm like, guess we got to elope. We do it at my parents. Yeah. Whatever. Just I'm our, not going to get Just our solving. bridal party. And like a couple added friends and closest family. We'd like Eleni could cater it. Baby, we're not doing that. Don't get excited Capri about Capri Club. We're not Bartender uninviting baby. people. Yeah, you're right. You, That'd be rude. you and I had that conversation. Be rude. I'm, not, be rude. I'm not I'm not like do that. I'm not making a rule out of nowhere. We said we're not gonna scale back now and be no, like, Hey, that- so sorry we lost our venue. Sorry, we can only do ten people now. I just think that's the worst thing in the world. Like I get it during COVID, I think it was acceptable. It was like unprecedented times. I hate that word. <laughs> I hate it. What but is it really- unprecedented? I'm just like not I know not but precedent. What- <laughs> it's just unique. Never different. Done, never happened known yeah. before. So it's like I get it. That was realistic, but like if we're just having a normal ass wedding and we're like, just kidding, Uncle Bob can't come, would be so bad. 
Not you name dropping my uncle Bob. You don't have an uncle Bob. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> But anyway, we like, found that wait. out on our drive. Then we go and take pictures. It was actually no, no. super. Then we're driving and the car starts smoking. I'm trying to speed up. Smoking. No, we're not speeding up. We we're we're only, sp- it's fine. The car starts smoking. We're panicking. I'm like, call the guy, call the guy. It's fine. I'm driving. Taryn thinks the car's going to blow up. I'm like, it's not going to blow up. We just might break down. He's like, ah, it's fine. Just some cold. We get on the engine. It'll burn off. And we're like, okay. He did not sound like that at all. In my head, he did. And then he was like, is it a little bit of smoke? Really? That's how he was. was yeah. He kind of it sounded like a, so loud. Like was, a Russian or something oh. or like Italian or something. He was like, is it well, a little I don't bit? know why it went hillbilly in my head. How much smoke? Okay. That's okay. fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, cool. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, we kept driving. We finally get there. It's like three forty-five, and we're two minutes away. We were supposed to be there at three. We're supposed to be at three, but we immediately before we even left the guy's house at 1230, Text our photographer said we are going to be there at three thirty, so we are technically fifteen minutes late. Huh. Um, but as we're pulling up, our photographer texts us and is like, "We lost the light," and I was like, "Oh my god, she's going to hate us!" But it was magical. If you haven't seen the photos, we posted some to our Instagram. These are the best photos ever. We are the hottest couple in the world. These are stunning. I've never seen anything better. <laughs> I don't feel hot. I'll tell you <gasps> that. You look. I'm going to flip the table. I don't look hot. Cammie was going to say, you look so cute. She always called me cute. I did not. I've not. I were you going to say that. I was not because I've stopped calling you cute because you're like, you always just call me cute. I have removed cute from my vocabulary because you don't receive it the way I'm intending it to be. So I've stopped calling you cute ever, even though you're so fucking cute. I'm not going to tell you you're cute ever again because you're getting upset. You can call me cute. It's just, you need to also say other words. And I do. All I do is say, you're so sexy, you're so hot, you're so perfect, you're so beautiful. But you choose not to hear those. So I'm but done cute, you. choose not to hear those. That's what I heard when he said that. I know you did. <laughs> um, no, Taryn looks fucking incredible in every picture. I'm obsessed. And they're just so us. Like, yeah. all jokes aside, it's not the hottest, sexiest couple in the world. Um, but they are so us. We're Speaking, like, can I just say about the hottest, sexiest in the world? Yeah. Cam, today I'm Ooh. finishing a work call and I just go on my Instagram and I see all these little pictures of her doing this little Victoria's Secret brand deal. And she's in this lingerie. Tasteful. 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 It was tasteful, but I am not. <laughs> and so my brain is like, whoa, my bells are ringing. I'm not okay. I text her immediately or I respond to her Instagram story. And I'm like, put these in a fucking folder. Now send me all the pictures to which you replied. What did you say to me? I don't remember, but I showed you them Sunday and you were not nice about it. So I no, I was not not nice. I was ill. If we don't remember, I I had thrown up. I was not, I was not there. I don't remember you showing me these on Sunday. I know you don't remember. So they weren't very nice about it. So I'm feeling a little weird about, I have a plethora of bonus photos that are just meant for your eyes only. That's what I, that's what I was getting feeling better about it. And you'll get them. And I'm like, put them in a book, put them in a magazine (laughs) frame, change every picture that is framed on our walls. What does this have to do with our engagement photos? Um, it doesn't matter. It's just fun to be really attracted to you. That's all I'm trying to say. I love you. You're so perfect. Love you. Um, anyways, God, stop looking at me. You're making me lose my concentration. <laughs> Our photos are very us. We're like laughing and playing and yeah. stop looking at me I, and like giggling and they're just, oh, it just makes me feel like such a good glimpse into yeah. our relationship. It like really captured us even yeah. through the stressful day. We literally got there. I didn't have a hairbrush. We didn't get to touch up our makeup. I felt like I looked like crap and we just started shooting and our photographer is just so great. It felt so comfortable and we were just hanging out and it was like 20, 30 minutes. Yeah. Maybe, maybe 30 minutes. It was probably 30 minutes. Yeah. Finished. And I love them and it just feels so awesome. It made me so excited for our wedding. I will say too, that like, I hate getting my picture taken. Like I said, um, because I'm focused the whole time on like, 
You know, you hear all the shit like put your chin down, but not too down, but then stick out your whatever. And like, you just kind of start looking like you're animatronic they, at this mm-hmm. point. You're just like trying to, you know, I don't know, do what I just did. If you're watching was rough um, and not what you should do. <laughs> However, um, it was really nice to be able to like, to look at you in those moments and like, it sounds so fucking, I feel, I'm like cheesed out at myself. I'm absolutely <laughs> cringe out at myself. But no, it was, say it, say it. It was so nice to like lock eyes with you mm-hmm. and be like, okay, you and I are just like in a desert and having fun. Yeah. And I'm going to forget that there is someone I just met 10 seconds ago taking pictures of me <laughs> and I'm in an outfit that makes me look like a cult leader. And <laughs> you love that. And I didn't love it. Mm, I really God. didn't. But Weird. it worked out in the pictures. It looks nice, but it looks great. But it was nice to like lock in to yeah. something. Yeah. But also to you was ideal. Mm-hmm. But it just makes me feel like it's okay to just like zoom in times 10. Yeah. If it's going to like help you get yeah. through something you don't want to be doing. Yeah. It was like, I feel like a lot of times when you get your picture taken, you're either like too embarrassed to pose and like try to look at yourself or you try too hard and it looks unnatural where we've never taken photos together like that. Like we don't take a lot of photos. We don't take a lot of pictures, but we've never had anyone else take our photo. I've been like our parents or something more like awkwardly standing there with their arm around. They're like, come on, go stand in front of the tree. My least favorite pictures I've ever had of me. I'm like, who is that ugly piece of shit? And like, we look like we don't even know each other. (laughs) They're horrible. We're just not good at those kind of photos. Nobody but, is when your parents are like, guys, no. go stand in front of the wall. You look cute. And you've just had like a filet <laughs> and she's had like tofu. Then you just go stand there and you're kind of like, no. but this was just fun. Cause like, I feel like there was like a lot of movement. Like we were actually just interacting with each other yeah. as we would with like the thought in our head of like, okay, there's a person there. Like I was like trying not to laugh too hard or I was like full triple chinning it up. But I was like, Focusing on Taryn. And that was really special. It was sweet. I really loved it. Like, I loved having that with you. I, I was think just I would say love that. I, felt, I feel safer with you, even after all of this time. I feel safer with you having experienced that with you. That's so cute. It just felt really, like, safe. I love you. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, anyways, that was our whole debacle. Oh, and then we were driving home and a cop was behind me for, like, 30 minutes and I wanted to throw up. I was yeah. like, I don't have the mental bandwidth to handle you behind me. I'm like, I don't even know if the speedometer is accurate on this car. It was such <sighs> a day, you guys. It was such a day. We came home like dead. We left at 1130, got home at nine. And the and next morning I had to fly to San Francisco for the whole day. all day work thing and fly home that night. We left at six and got home at 830. It was wild. It was crazy, y'all. So we've had a wild week. But literally, these are the weeks and the moments where I'm like, yep, I'm making the right decision. This is my person. I'm 100% you meant still to question be with. it? I've never questioned it. Hmm. Shit, she does. No, I'm saying. No, it's okay if you do. The way that you said, these are the weeks that I'm like, yes, I made the right decision. No, I've never questioned it. makes me think that it, there are weeks that you don't think that, that you made the right decision. Of course you would spin this into like a scary name. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, that's an honest question. I say like this sweet thing and you're like, so you question it sometimes. <laughs> like, not. dude, <sighs> tell your anxiety to fucking get out of here. My intern is it. interning. Yeah. It, tell the intern to clock off its holidays. No, but it's like in those moments when I was driving home and I was like, these are the moments where it would have made sense that we would fight a thousand times today Sorry, or be frustrated trash. or not vibe. And I feel closer to you than I, I feel really close with you in times of crisis. I feel really safe with you in times of crisis. Like when we fight or we argue, I feel so unsafe and I feel so stressed out and they're over dumb shit. Yeah. When, when shit hits the fan and I need you and we need each other, never felt safer in my life. Like there's no one I would want to go through crazy, hectic, shitty things than with you. And that's one of the ways I know that I want to marry you because life is going to be hard. Like we are just getting started. Yes. I know some people listening might be young little teeny boppers and we're in our early thirties and that sounds old, but we have 
marriage. We have kids. We have putting our We're kids like through college. We're like a third done of our life. So, so much is going to happen. happen. Like, think about the last few years of our life. Think about like what our parents have gone through in the last couple of years. We haven't, we don't even know what that's going to look like for us. It's going to be a lot and I'm sure it's going to be so intense, but I just like, I feel like we can kind of do anything because when, when life gets really hard, that's when I feel like we power up and team up together. And we're like, we're like the football team that performs best under pressure. And like when they're not doing so well, or like Steelers play the Patriots and they like come out of nowhere and just rock them. It's like, that's us. I love you. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Can't wait to marry you. Sorry, we're such saps on these Sap things. Is, sap is, we've had a hard week. We deserve it. We've okay. had a hard week. We are going to end the episode on a little listener advice question. Hit us. Are you ready? Hit me. There's a lot of like added stuff to this email that we are not allowed to share. They give a little like background and talk and stuff. So I'll let you read that after this. However, this is part that I'm allowed to share publicly. Juicy. So I'm starting to fancy a girl I know who's in a relationship. I'd say I'm friends with her girlfriend too. I don't know if I should try to distance myself or let myself become closer knowing I low-key feel some sort of way for one of them. I'd never get in between a relationship, so wouldn't ever act on it. It's also not that deep. But I don't know whether I should distance myself or not. Thought it might be a relatable question for you both, given your meetings. If anyone listening doesn't know, Tara and I were friends for like five years before we started dating. We had both been in multiple relationships during those times, so I think we definitely there were some feelings there while we were going through these times in our lives and like thought, hmm, might like this person. Um, you want to start baby? Yeah. I think, I think I might have just like a very cut and dry answer, which is I like, you do absolutely distance yourself. If you know, it's not that deep, this is not worth it. It's going to come around. If it's going to come around, don't fuck with someone else's thing. Mm-hmm. Right now, this person is choosing to be with someone else and not with you, even though that they know you. And that should be, that is enough data to be like, okay, well, regardless of if, even if they fucking loved you, they're still choosing to be with someone else. Yeah. And that should be enough, I would hope, for you and your self-respect. So distance yourself. You don't have to like cut them out and be all dramatic and be like, I think I need time. Like you don't have to do that. You can just start to be like hanging out with them less and getting busier with other friends and like doing other shit than spending time with this person, especially like on their own or even in the couple, both of it's bad. Just little distance, start to back away, protect yourself, protect them. You don't need to add stress to the situation. That's my advice. Yeah. I, th- I kind of figured you would give kind of like cut and dry. I just don't think life is cut and dry. Um, but they even said to you, it's not that deep. So that's what I want to talk about. Because if it wasn't that deep, would you be emailing into a podcast Fair. to get advice? Um, I think you might be underestimating or underselling your feelings. Because if it wasn't that deep, like people have had little crushes on friends and been like, whatever, it's fine. I think you wouldn't be asking for advice if it was... Maybe they're just bored. Maybe, but I just... I don't... I think... You think you do like this person, and it's probably painful to see them with their person. And if you're also friends with that person, you probably enjoy them. I don't think you're... I don't think it's fair to be friends with someone and not tell them about your feelings for them, because that's going to cloud your judgment. If... If you're friends with them and they get in a fight and your friend who you have a crush on comes to you for advice, I don't think you're going to give unbiased advice. And that's not fair to that person. Like, I just don't think that that's right to not disclose that information. I think Tara and I were really lucky because we lived in different cities. So we weren't that close. Like we were friends and like every time I talked to her, loved it. I felt like I never really opened up to people, but when I talked to Tara and I really did, I enjoyed our friendship so much. And then I would spend Thanksgivings with her family, which was like our fun little tradition. But I I literally saw Taryn once a year 
for most of the years of our friendship. Yeah. And then once there were like feelings there, it was very, very clear. And like we, we got together. So I just don't like someone's going to get hurt. Someone's bound to get hurt. You are going to get hurt. You're going to hurt one of your friends. If you're actually friends with both of them, kind of doesn't seem like you're that close with the girl's girlfriend. I don't know. Wait, so what, what would your advice be? What would you do then? I what would you tell I, this person to do? I almost need more context. Like how, but close, you don't have more context. I know. I want you to slightly distance yourself because I also feel like I've been on almost the other side of this of like a friend liking you and not knowing that. And it like feels icky to not know. And like, feeling like, Oh, this is such a good friend. But even in that situation, you just would have wished that they would have distanced themselves. I don't think you would have wished that they would have told you that. No, I do. I think you distance, but like keep them, keep them in your orbit and in your life because maybe there will be a time. And if they're single, you can tell them, like, I don't think you should disrespect their relationship. And if you feel the need, like, if you feel like it's going to weigh on you, tell them, be like, you know what? I just don't feel like it's appropriate to be friends because I think I like you more than a friend. It doesn't feel right. And like, I really respect you and I really respect your relationship and I would never cross any boundaries, but it feels weird. I just don't think you can be friends with people you have crushes on. It's, it's, you're not going to be an unbiased friend. And then that's going to make your person you have crush on feel like crap. So yeah, I think you kind of, Stay in their orbit, but a little bit pull away. Kind of yes. keep them as like, not an acquaintance, but like keep them as a friend, but they can't be your best friend. You can't be hanging out. Definitely don't hang out with like in a little crew and just don't make it a thing. Like our advice is very similar right now. Yeah. It's basically I, like, don't make it about you because it's not about you right yeah. now. And the stars are not aligning for a reason. Yeah. Like Tara and I spent years just being friends and being more on the like acquaintance side of friends, like seeing each other every yeah. once in a while, not saying anything to each other, not making it weird, not crossing boundaries. And because of that, and we let it cultivate on its own, we gained experience in our past relationships. Like I'm so glad we didn't date sooner. I don't Me too. I don't think we would have worked out sooner. So maybe that's what yeah. you need. And also like, you're going to have a crush on a million people. Dude, this a crush is not is a, that serious. A crush is a dime a dozen. And, and if also, oh, wait, I want to reiterate. It says, I fancy a girl. I know they didn't say like, I fancy my best friend. Leave these people don't need me in your life. Well, th- them saying I fancy a girl. I know maybe makes me think that they're British or something. And maybe like a girl I know is like a little different. Maybe regardless, if you were like, y'all, I'm sick over my friend. I love this girl. We yeah. would have such a great life together. I'd be like, mm, you gotta I would have a different situation. But for you, the way you so casually wrote this, reminding yeah. us it's not that serious, mm-hmm. yada, yada. But are they just protecting themselves? If you can protect yourself to that extent, mm-hmm. when you write into a podcast and say this shit, I think that you're not feeling it. Yeah. If I was in a situation with you where I was like, shit, I want to be with Cammy so bad, but... X, Y, Z. And I was writing that into a podcast. I would lay every little bit of that out on the table. What is there to lose? And we did. And we did. And here we are. And we didn't until we did. Until we did. And that was all for a reason. And then we did. And then our venue canceled. (laughs) And here we are doing a weekly podcast. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I wish you the best. I really do think you should give a little space, but you know what? What's meant to be will be. You will be okay. That'll be fine. And I think that wraps up today's podcast, guys. <laughs> Thanks for staying up with us. Sleep well. We love you. We love you. And if and it, it, you know what? A lot of y'all listen in the morning. Happy morning. If happy, it's those folks. Happy morning. If you're going to work. If oh, you're that sounded like people who say happy Christmas. I happy Christmas. That's an ick of mine when people say happy and what say Mary. What have you done? Another year over, a new one just begun. I don't even to say. (laughs) Anyway, love y'all. Thanks for showing up. Next week, bye.